Bruce, you were describing what radius gold is. Can you yes. repeat that wonderful one-liner you started with before we started this interview? Well, I just radius gold just tries to find mines. I'm an explorer. I, that's my job. I, I try to find mineral deposits. Don't really mind where they are or what they look like as long as they make money and as long as they're great mines. So that's what radius does. We focus in Mexico mostly because I love Mexico and Mexicans are miners. So it's a great place to be. Okay. I, I happen to love Mexico as well. And I was going to ask you about your most recent news release about Guatemala, but let's just jump into Mexico. So for those of you out there at Investor Intel going, okay, Radius Gold, Mexico, give us a good overview on Radius Gold in Mexico, please. Mexico is a mining nation. It's the world's largest producer of silver. Um, it has some issues like most countries, but the the people, the reason I choose to go to Mexico is because the Mexicans are miners, they love it. So we hardly ever have problems with communities or anything like that because the Mexicans just, you know, they ask me, when are you going to start? When are you going to start mining? And I have to tell them, well, in about five years because it takes a long time to find a mine. So I've been operating in Mexico on and off for 20 years, um, helping Radius there for the last seven as CEO for the last one and a half, two years. And Radius, all of our projects are grassroots discoveries. We made them. Um, we've got one project called Amalia, which I think is going to be a mine. It's a fantastic discovery. It's got multiple um, areas that we're drilling, all with very high-grade drill results, all looking fantastic. But we have a partnership with um, Pan American Silver. And the benefits and the advantage and disadvantage of that partnership is one, we're partnered with one of the world's biggest silver mining companies. They've got tons of resource and experience, but we are now have a, major, a minority stake. So we don't easily control our destiny, but we've made a fantastic discovery there. Um, some of the drill holes we drilled at the start were the best epithermal gold silver drill holes in the world at the time. 44 meters at 12 grams gold and 309 silver, for example, and we've hit repeatedly on multiple structures. So that has gone quiet just lately because Pan American has been involved in a large scale merger with Yamana. Um, and that is now completed and, well, announced so we can get back to work and we'll be talking to Pan American soon about restarting drilling there. Then we have made another grassroots discovery called Plata Verde, a very unusual silver deposit. Um, it's early stages, but has real scale, size, capacity, very interesting project. And we were thinking about how to fund it because you can always you know, you can dilute your shareholders by raising money or you can take partnership money. And Fresneo, um, it's a Mexican um, company listed on the London Stock Exchange. It is the world's biggest producer of silver. They came to us and said, oh, we like that. Can we have it? And I said, well, <laughs> if you've got the money, we can make a deal. So for it, we announced that um, last year, uh, about four months ago, and we are now bulldozing a road down to it, getting ready for drill access, and the world's biggest silver mining company is our partner, and they don't go into um, early stage projects very often, but they obviously think Plata Verde has huge uh, potential, otherwise we wouldn't have them as a partner. I mean, this is not a small thing. It's a giant historic underground mining system that we rediscovered, and we'll be drilling that um, next year, early next year. And then we have multiple other projects and partnerships. So we've got, you are going to ask about Guatemala, I could tell you why we're there next. All right, so further, I, I want to stay on Mexico for just a minute. Uh, you seem to have a partnership model. Uh, you've got a lot of years of experience. You, you, why are you selecting or electing to do these partnerships? We have an open model where we decide on the best way to advance an asset um, at the time of discovery, depending on the market and how easy it is to raise money and 
how quick we think we can have success. So I like to drill my own projects. We've drilled many um, and we've made discoveries and that doesn't mean I won't drill the next one I've got in mind. The thing is that when we found, for example, uh, Plata Verde, we were deciding whether we should issue some stock and raise some money when the world's biggest silver mining company comes to you and says, hey, we have seen this project, we really like it. And I looked at that and said, well, the guy who runs that's got a PhD in this area. And recently they found a 10 million ounce um, gold mine just to the north of us. They really know what they're doing. They've got tons of muscle. When you've got them in, you're going to have hundreds of drill holes. So it's a big, you know, at the time you decide what is the best way to advance. And the next discovery we make, uh, you know, we'll we'll decide at that time if the markets are a bit better and our share price is up a little bit, we might just raise some money and start drilling. Right now, we've got enough money to last for a couple of years and continue to do project generation. And, and we are all the time bringing on new projects. Um, and if I start drilling tomorrow, then with this market, um, we can reduce risk by partnering. So right now we have three projects where we've got partners putting in money and we've, we reduce a little bit our, our upside, but we certainly diversify and have a lot more chance of discovery with partners. So it's a balance always. There's no perfect model. Uh, I'm a big believer in collaboration, especially in these current markets. So I'm going to lean on you for just a minute to provide us with some feedback on the silver and gold market. Can I get you to talk to us about that? Well, um, I'm a geologist and I've been looking for gold and silver for the last 30 years. So I'm maybe not the person to tell you that gold is going to break out next six months or whatever, because I just long term believe it's always going to be good. And you've got to have timing. So I don't stop looking for gold or silver tomorrow because the market's a bit down or it's a bit up. We just balance our our fundraising by looking at these partnerships. Now, if you go to the gold conferences, you listen to all the best minds in the world telling you that gold is going to break out next year. And they've been saying that for a while. And, and I think that, you know, that they're right, that gold is going to go through a, a massive ramp up soon, but I don't know whether that soon is months or years. So for me, gold, silver always has uh, interest and is always a, a valuable metal. It's a thousand dollars a teaspoonful for a good reason, but I don't watch the market closely from day to day and say, oh, I think it's going to rise quickly in the next two or three months. Hence, I'll make this decision on a project. We don't do that. We just always focus on having great assets so that when the market does come, we'll be, you know, a, a part of it. But we can survive through the downturn because we're good at finding great projects. Good at finding great projects. We've touched on the ones in Mexico and your outstanding drilling results you recently put out. Uh, let's talk about Guatemala. So we have historically been involved in Guatemala. Actually, our country manager helped write the mining law there 25 years ago. Um, Simon Ridgway, the founder of the group, um, found a couple of deposits early in his career, one in Honduras, one in Guatemala, and he sold those both and, you know, started his fortune, I would say. And since then, we've had a historic relationship with Guatemala where we've held a lot of ground. Now, two years ago, the Guatemala had a new government pro-mining, one of the first ever. This politician got up and said that he's going to, you know, promote mining in the country, which is really unusual for any politician anywhere to say that. And then a couple of big companies that, you know, have a lot of brains decided that they would go to Guatemala. And that was Pan American Silver paid nearly a billion dollars to acquire the Escobal um, project, which had been halted. It's one of the world's largest primary silver deposits. And Lundin uh, Mining, uh, or the Lundin family, decided to put money into a company called Bluestone and try to develop the Cerro Blanco deposit in Guatemala. So these two big companies um, with good records and a lot of funds go to Guatemala. 
And well, there's a new government, and we had these historic. We have the largest land package in the country. So, but and it sits between them. So we decided that we would go back there. Political risk in Guatemala is high, but geological risk is low. Yep. So we have been drilling on a project called Holly, and we've had some fantastic drill results there. The last couple of, you know, we had some holes recently, roughly five meters wide at 50 grams gold and a couple of kilos silver at Holly. And we've got a small resource there, 400,000 ounces, roughly equivalent at high grade, around about nine grams. So we think that that is, you know, could easily be trucked to bluestone um and could easily get a lot bigger and we're just waiting at this time to return to drilling once bluestone has got its uh, mining license which they say that could be in the next few months but what we have found in guatemala and this is why we're there um, even though there's political risk, we have found a phenomenal new system called Matawa Norte. I've never seen results like it ever before, and I've been doing this for 30 years. We've got, um, it's an orogenic system, which is a mountain building system, different from the other deposits of um, Guatemala. So I've worked in Africa and the Archean and Canada and Australia, and it's it's an orogenic system. They can be very, very high grade, and this is producing phenomenal grades from prospecting. We're getting rocks where you can pick up the hunks and see big flaky and wire gold through it. And I think on one property, one prospect that we call Miller, out of the uh, couple of hundred samples we've taken there, the average grade is 30 grams gold. It's unbelievable grades. So we're just trying to get that permitted. We had 350,000 hectares in Guatemala. We knew that we wouldn't get it all permitted, um, but we just had to prospect a lot of it and then decide which were the key bits and then get those permitted. So we've found this Matawa Norte. We've now done 95% of the permitting process and we're just shuffling the last few papers and we hope to get that going soon. And that'll, once that goes, that'll be a, a you know, an unbelievable project to explore. Well, thank you so much. This is Bruce Smith with Radius Gold. For more information, go to radiusgold.com. And Bruce, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Tracy. That was great.